Welcome to Tutorial 7. In this tutorial, we will cover how to extract as much information as possible from a GPSX model using the Analyze functions. This will include setting up and running steady state, phase dynamic, and time dynamic sensitivity analysis. For simplicity, we'll be using a simple layout consisting of an influent, a CSTR, and a circular secondary clarifier. Now connect the objects together. Once we've got the layout connected together, set the influent model to COD states. The CSTR model to Mantis and the clarifier to Simple 1D. Save the model and compile the simulation code. Create a new scenario called Sinusoidal and set both the flow and load pattern of the influent to Sinusoidal. The flow can be changed by opening Flow, Flow Data, and setting the flow type to Sinusoidal. The load type can be changed by opening Composition, Load Type option and setting the load type. Now that we've got the influence set up, we need to create input controls for the influent flow and the airflow into the aeration tank. Just like in previous tutorials, the influent flow variable can be found by right-clicking on the influent object and selecting Flow, Flow Data. The airflow in the aeration tank can be found in the CSTR object under Operational in the Input Parameters menu. Under the Specify Oxygen Transfer By drop-down menu, select Entering Airflow and set the airflow into the aeration tank to 15,000 meters cubed per day. Now that we've got both parameters on the same input control tab, let's set their limits. We'll set the limits on the influent flow from 0 to 10,000 meters cubed per day. And we'll set the airflow to 10,000 to 25,000 meters cubed per day. Next, we are going to create output graphs for the effluent ammonia, BOD5, total nitrogen concentration, and the DO concentration in the aeration tank. We are going to create these as four separate graphs this time. The effluent free and ionized ammonia variable can be found by right-clicking on the effluent stream of the final clarifier and selecting State Variables from the Output Variables menu. Similarly, the BOD5 concentration can be found by right-clicking on the same effluent stream and selecting Composite Variables from the Output Variables menu. The total nitrogen concentration is located in the effluent's Output Variables, Composite Variables, More dialog. Finally, the dissolved oxygen concentration in the aeration basin can be found by right-clicking on it and selecting State Variables from the Output Variables menu. Next, rearrange and label the graphs. Use the range 0 to 30 for ammonia, BOD, and total nitrogen, and 0 to 5 for dissolved oxygen. Now that we've got the graph set up, let's run a one-day steady-state simulation to verify that our model is working. This is a good thing to do with more complex models, as it will inform us of problems with the layout or setup before we do anything more complicated. Now that we know that the model is working, let's carry out a steady-state sensitivity analysis of the airflow into the aeration tank on the dependent variables we've selected for display. 
In order to carry out the analysis, in the input control properties, change the airflow into the aeration tank from a slider to analyze. And set the delta value to 300. This sets the variable's increment size for the analysis. Next, click the Analyze button drop down menu and select Steady State from the list. Click the Analyze button to switch from Edit Mode to Analyze Mode. Now that we're in Analyze Mode, start a zero day steady state simulation and observe the effects of increases in airflow on the DO, CBOD5, ammonia, and total nitrogen. Try running the analysis again using different influent flows and observe the results. Now that we know how to run a steady state sensitivity analysis, let's run a time dynamic sensitivity analysis of the airflow in the aeration tank on the variables. First, on the menu bar, select Options, Preferences, Input Output, and change the number of runs displayed for Analyze Optimize to 7. Next, under the Analyze drop-down menu, select Time Dynamic. Set the simulation time to one day and make sure that the steady state box is checked. This indicates that the initial conditions are at steady state. Now run the simulation. Each successive curve on the various graphs are the result of a dynamic simulation using a specific airflow into the aeration tank. If you watch the value of airflow in the input control tab during the simulation, you can see the incremental increase of 300 meters cubed per day each run. We should also take note that the values are fluctuating over time due to the sinusoidal influent flow and load patterns we defined. Finally, we are going to carry out a phase dynamic sensitivity analysis of the airflow into the aeration tank on our dependent variables. Just like in the previous methods, from the Analyze drop down menu, select Phase Dynamic and run a one-day simulation, making sure that the steady state box is checked so that the initial conditions are at steady state. This type of analysis runs the same dynamic simulations as the last method, but plots the results against the analyze variable and not time. The length of the simulation will set the phase. And that's the basics of setting up and running steady state, phase dynamic, and time dynamic sensitivity analyses. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in information on our other software products, such as CAP Networks for preliminary design and costing, ToxChem for industrial wastewater treatment modeling, or WattPro for drinking water treatment modeling, you can visit our website at www.hydromantis.com for further information.